after one week or so, reading about the first foundation of mindfulness, contemplation of the body. Now we are entering the next one, the next foundation of mindfulness, contemplation of feeling, Vedana Nupasana. Let's read to find out what is this about. The next foundation of mindfulness is feeling, Vedana. The word feeling is used here not in the sense of emotion, a complex phenomenon best subsumed under the third and fourth foundations of mindfulness. But in the narrower sense of the affective tone or hedonic quality of experience. This may be of three kinds, yielding three principal types of feeling. Pleasant, pleasant feeling, painful feeling, and neutral feeling. The Buddha teaches that feeling is an inseparable concomitant of consciousness, since every act of knowing is colored by some affective tone. Thus, feeling is present at every moment of experience. It may be strong or weak, clear or indistinct, but some feeling must accompany the cognition. This first sentence, uh, the second sentence, is important to understand. Most of us think of feeling, at least the English connotation of feeling, is about how we feel. You know, we are sad, we are angry. But in the context of Buddhism, especially in the context of this foundation of mindfulness, that is not what we meant. Yeah? Refer here not in the sense of emotions, which a complex, you know, emotion is a complex phenomenon best categorized under the third and fourth foundation of mindfulness, which we will explore in the weeks to come. Feelings should be understood in the narrower sense of the affective tone of experience, the hedonic quality. Okay, what is hedonic? Let's take a look. <laughs> ah, yeah. Relating to, characterized by, considered in terms of pleasant or unpleasant sensations. Uh, this is a, a good definition. Uh, Shifu, when I attended Heart Sutra, sometimes he used this word, sensations. It's exactly what we feel uh, when, we, when we encounter any objects, yeah? sensations. Let's go back to the text. Mm -hmm. This may be of three kinds yielding three principal types of feeling, pleasant feeling, painful feeling, and neutral feeling. Yeah. What is the example of this? Pleasant feeling, huh? when we have uh, maybe our parents or our, our partners, our boyfriend or our, our girlfriend, huh? when they touch us softly, huh? maybe they will give rise to pleasant feelings. <laughs> oh, when we quarrel with them, and then it's escalated to physical fight, and then one slap, oh, <laughs> that gives rise to poor, painful feeling. Neutral feeling uh, is whatever you don't really notice whatever experience you don't really notice. For example, even something like holding your phone, usually the sensation in your hand is like neutral, nothing, nothing much pleasant or not painful as well. 
Yeah, these are just some of the example of these three types of feeling. Pleasant, painful, and neutral. Yeah, in your everyday experience, you can think of many things that can be pleasant, painful, and neutral. For example, when you hold your pee too long, you will feel unpleasant feeling somewhere, somewhere down in your body. When you finally release the pee, when you finally urinate, then you will feel some kind of relief. And that, that feels could be pleasant. Yes. Yeah, you can try to think of what are some of the, all of these examples in your daily life. The Buddha teaches that feeling is an inseparable concomitant of consciousness, inseparable component of consciousness. Since every act of knowing is colored by some affective tone. Thus feeling is present at every moment of experience. It may be strong or weak, clear or indistinct, but some feeling must accompany the condition. Yeah. So whenever you are conscious, you will have some feeling accompanied by it. For example, maybe when we when we chant the puja, we will feel some kind of a pleasant uh, feeling. Or maybe in whatever act we do, yeah? let's say even just walking. Yeah? Usually we don't feel much when we walk, so neutral feeling. Sometimes when you do exercise, you have to do some intense physical exercise. Like for me, I do sprint. Sprint is really taxing on the body. So it is actually a really uh, painful feeling to sprint yeah? because it takes toll on the body. Yeah. In whatever conscious act that you do, some kind of feeling must, have, must accompany it. In the case of walking, it's neutral. In the case of sprinting, it's painful for me. Yeah. yeah, so that's about it for this paragraph. Any of you would like to add on anything? If not, then let's read the next paragraph. How about Sister Aikim, would you like to read? Okay. Feeling arises in dependence on a mental event called contact passer. Contact marks the coming together of consciousness with the object via a sense faculty. It is the factor by virtue of which consciousness touches the project, presenting itself to the mind through the sense of through the sense organ. Thus, there are six kinds of contact distinguished by the six sense faculties: eye contact, ear contact, nose contact, tongue contact, body contact, and mind contact and six kinds of feeling distinguished by the contact from which they spring. Thank you. Thanks, Sister Aikim. Okay, contact, uh, FASA. Some of you who have attended the Heart Sutra course might remember this, might recall this concept called contact. Feeling arises in dependence of the mental event called Contact. Contact marks the coming together of consciousness with the object via a sense faculty. This, all these three factors. Yeah, the first one, consciousness. Second one, object. The third one, sense faculty. Yeah, do you recall these three objects? When Sifu draw it, these three. And then the middle of this tree would be contact. Yeah, please. 
look back at your heart sutra notes. <laughs> this is explained again in here. Consciousness, object, and sense faculty. It is the factor by virtue of which consciousness touches the object presenting itself to the mind through the sense organ. There are six kinds of contacts distinguished by the sense faculties. Eye contact, ear contact, nose contact, tongue contact, body contact, and mind contact. Six kinds of feelings distinguished by the contact from which they spring. Eye contact, what are some of the example? Eye contact when I see an unpleasant person, <laughs> for example, at least in my mind, I see them as unpleasant because of previous encounters. Then painful feeling based on eye contact could arise. In contrast, if I walk around and then I see some lady walking around and then pleasant feeling could arise in me based on eye contact. Ear contact, when there's a music that I like playing around, then pleasant feeling could arise. When I meditate, my housemates were shouting or <laughs> playing games <laughs> that I would call that the unpleasant feeling arises through the ear contact. Nose contact. When I enter into the washroom and they did not flush whatever is inside, oh, the odor is so strong, it's so unpleasant. <laughs> What are the examples of pleasant feeling through nose? Sometimes my housemates also cook, and especially when I'm hungry, oh, it smells so nice to cook. Yeah, I wish I can have some. That's an example of nose contact. Tongue contact, well, this, the most relatable would be the contact with food. If the food is something that you like, it will give rise to pleasant feeling. If the food is something that you don't like, for me, it will be cauliflower. <laughs> then my tongue will be, oh no, cauliflower is so unpleasant. Uh, body contact I explained before. The, if the person, <laughs> a person that's pleasant to you, you know, maybe, uh, touch your, pat your back, and then you feel, oh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Thanks for patting my back. <laughs> uh, if it's the person that you don't like, oh, don't touch me. <laughs> so unpleasant. Uh, mind contact, probably not so easy to understand, but whatever your, uh, whatever you can encounter, in your mind, probably something like uh, when someone praises you oh, and then you feel, oh, thanks for praising me, even though it goes through the ear contact, but it's mostly the mind processing it. Yeah. I will see if I can find some examples of the mind contact. Uh, I think I recall somewhere Bhikkhu Bodhi mentioned it before, but I will try to find more examples for this. Any of you know some example of mind contact? Yeah, I will review my past notes and get back to you. And then six kinds of feeling distinguished by the contact from which they spring. Let's read one more paragraph. 
before we wrap up for today. Sister Aikin, would you like to nominate? Uh, can Sister Billy take over? Thank you. Okay. Feeling acquires special importance as an object of contemplation because it is a feeling, it is feeling that usually triggers the latent defilements into activity. The feelings may not be clearly registered, but in subtle ways, they nourish and sustain the dispositions to unwholesome states. Thus, when a pleasant feeling arises, we fall under the influence of the defilement, greed, and cling to it. When a painful feeling occurs, we respond with displeasure, hate, and fear, which are aspects of aversion. And when a neutral feeling occurs, we generally do not notice it or let it lull us into a false sense of security, states of mind governed by delusion. From this, from this it can be seen that each of the root defilements is conditioned by a particular kind of feeling, greed by pleasant feeling, aversion by painful feeling, delusion by neutral feeling. Thanks, Billy. Okay. Feeling is important as an object of contemplation because it is feeling that triggers the latent defilements into activity. The feelings may not be clearly registered, but in subtle ways, they nourish, they sustain the dispositions to unwholesome states. How? When a pleasant feeling arises, we fall under the in influence of the development, greed and cling to it. One example that I always give is the, in relation with food, I always get something that I like. And when I have it in my normal mode, I always have greed you know, when I eat my food because I want, I want pleasant feelings. Yeah. And then I cling to that greed. In the future, when I'm hungry, I will look for the same type of food again. Yeah. That is what's, what this sentence means. When a painful feeling occurs, we respond with displeasure, hate, fear, which are aspects of aversion. You know? Whenever I see cauliflower, I already have some <laughs> aversion. Oh no, not again, not cauliflower this time. Yeah. In the Taiwan stall, when I see cauliflower, I always keep it, uh, not cauliflower. So that's how I respond, how I normally respond with displeasure, with aversion, you know, with fear. When a neutral feeling occurs, we usually generally do not notice it or let it allow us into a false sense of security. States of mind governed by delusion. From this, it can be seen that each of the root defilements is conditioned by a particular kind of feeling. Greed by pleasant feeling, aversion by painful feeling. Delusion by neutral feeling. Let's read one more before we wrap up. Uh, Sister Billy, would you like to nominate? Uh, can I ask Sister Shumi, please? Thank you. Okay. But the, sorry, yeah. Is, but the link between feelings and the defilements is not a necessary one. Pleasure does not always have to lead to greed, pain, to aversion, neutral feeling, to delusion. The tie between them can be snapped. And one essential means for snapping it is mindfulness. Feeling will stir up a defilement only when it is not noticed when it is indulged rather than observed. By turning it into an object of observation, 
mindfulness diffuses the feeling so that it cannot provoke an unwholesome response. Then, instead of relating to the feeling by way of habit through attachment, repulsion or apathy, we relate by way of contemplation, using the feeling as a springboard for understanding the nature of experience. Thanks, Shomei. In my seven days retreat, I read when I read this part, you know, there, there is a time allocated for reading. So when I read this part, it was so, I would say, kind of a, like a realization to me. I was like, oh, so this is how it works. So I drew up a diagram to show what this paragraph means. Let's take a look over here. Mindfulness of feeling. These three are the feelings that we have. Pleasant, painful, and neutral. In our usual modes, these are the defilements, greed, hatred, delusion. Usually, all these three will lead to the tree on the right, you know, like the one that we have read. Pleasant to greed, painful to hatred, neutral to delusion. But in the middle, what snaps this up, as Shomei has read, has read, is the mindfulness. You see the one in the middle here? I, do, I drew this in a circle. And then I drew an arrow through these three arrows, which snap the link between feelings and developments. Yeah. So I felt this is a really good uh, paragraph to show how mindfulness works. Okay, I will stop for today. Any of you would like to comment or add on? If not, let's do a dedication. Yen Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fanna. Yen the Chai Zhen. Yen Jui Zhang Si Xiao Zhu. She shed Chang Sing Posada. Meet of all. Till we meet again, may we be guided by the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Have a mindful Monday ahead. Mindful of your feelings. Uh, the moment just now when I get out from my seat, I feel numbness in my leg. Already painful feeling arises in my leg. <laughs> Thanks everyone for participating today. I'll see you guys next time.